I'm actually really annoyed because my yard guy like literally just got here as I'm filming and he's really loud and he's supposed to come on Fridays and today is Saturday. So do you guys hear that? <sighs> anyway, hello, welcome to my channel. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Stacy, and I make videos on fashion, styling, and shopping. And today's video is going to be a fashion talk plus a Gucci unboxing. So yeah, another Gucci unboxing. I know. Let's just move on. Let's move on. All right, so um, outfit of the day. This is um, a t-shirt. It's a shoulder pad tee that I got from Zara last year in like 2020 i believe um, and i just paired it with a pair of like bermuda shorts denim bermuda shorts i'm not gonna post a picture because i don't really have one because i don't really feel like taking the picture <laughs> sorry but you know i will um you guys have seen these shorts before i may post a picture of me with these shorts on the shirt is no longer available so there's no point in that anyway and you guys always ask me about my jewelry. I never really think to even talk about it, but uh, most of what I wear um, on my arms, this is, um, these are B bracelets from BSGO Jewelry, which is my jewelry company. I hand make these beads. So uh, most of what I do is made to order. It's kind of, I've kind of been on high hiatus from that, you know, since the pandemic, because it's been really difficult to like go and get a lot of materials to continue to make bracelets. So I've sort of taken a bit of a break. Although, you know, I will take a few um, like special orders here and there. You know, that's been the essentially what I've been doing for the most part for the past, I'd say, year and a half. Um, and then I also have like this Kate Spade, Kate Spade bracelet. And then sometimes I'll also layer it with like my um, Tiffany, Return to Tiffany, like link chain silver bracelet so yeah but all these i i've made um, on my i've made um if you do want to see some more of my work um check me out on my other instagram page which is um bsgo jewelry um and that stands for big sister gorgeous one i took that from a different world if you know you know but anyway um my rings so you guys have been asking me about these rings these and i think you guys were asking about like these fabric rings here like this one and then this one here because this is just like a little basic ring that i probably bought from like who knows h&m or whatever but i don't know if you can, guys can kind of get that in but um yeah there was fabric rings i got them from zara i think they were like a two pack and like $17.90 or whatever. And I, I I mean, I wear them every day. They're very interesting. Uh, I think it brings some interest to your, to your arms. Um, but please check out Zara's like jewelry. I mean, they do jewelry well to me. I think they do a lot of interesting things. A lot of things I do get, like those little like wrist, those little leather wristlets I used to wear. Those I got from Zara too. I just always check out their accessory section because that stuff does go fast. They don't make a ton. Um, of product, you know, so it will go fast. But I'm always checking it out because I think they have really good jewelry, and interesting jewelry. So that's that's all that this is right here. They're just two fabric, like woven, like rings. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, like $17.90. I think it was a pack of two. And then this is just probably a ring I got from Madewell here. And then this I probably got from maybe Target, I mean, just really basic. And then I think I got this one from ASOS. This is a sterling silver ring here, and that's that. And this right here, this is a necklace from Target. I think this is from the Bobble Bar um, Target line. I It's actually a longer, I just sort of like clipped it so that it could be more choker style because I really didn't need something that was a little bit, I wanted to like layer it and have anything that was super short. So that's that was my, my way of doing that and then this is like a a custom piece that i got from bobble bar this is my name it's stacy and like this little acrylic blue which i thought was really cute um I, i've ordered this from the actual bobble bar sites i forget it was like maybe 50 dollars or something like that and it took like a week to do it so and it comes and you can do a different metal like silver or gold um 
I'm not sure if you can do like rose gold, but I know you can definitely do yellow gold, which is this one, and then silver, and then you can do like different colors and different scripts. So I just got this not too long ago. I don't know if you can see that, but it just says Stacy S T A C I, and this is just like a little heart necklace that I got. I believe I got this from Target too. Target has they they released like some newer necklaces that were like sterling silver but it was gold plated over the sterling silver so i believe this is from that piece it was a little bit pricey i think it was like maybe 24 or between 19 and 25 dollars i think so and then this is just some hoop earrings i probably bought from like the beauty supply store for like three bucks so that is that so let's get into this fashion talk i'm trying to like make these videos like not as long you know some of you guys might not want to hear me talk this long so i'm going to try and do like time stamps because i did remember that i wanted to include some of this jewelry in here because lots of people have asked me about jewelry i didn't know if i wanted to do a separate video for it but i did want to at least address the jewelry that i'm wearing in my videos but anyway so guys do you guys watch cassie thorpe Okay, so if you don't watch her, you really should. If you really like luxury or if you like watching luxury videos, I watch her videos all the time. I think she is highly entertaining. Like, she really is. She's a breath of fresh air um, in this sea of luxury YouTube land, in my opinion. I think she has fresh ideas for videos. And through her video, it sort of prompted me to make this particular one. So maybe a week or two ago, she did a video about like luxury items that you would live to probably regret. And these were more so like current items that are really popular right now. And you know, no shade because she listed two items on, on there that she actually owns herself. So it's not like she's trying to like, you know, make people feel bad or it's not, that's not really what her intent is. It's just like, you know, a fun tongue in cheek video although now here's the thing i didn't agree with a lot of what she said in the video however i i could acknowledge that you know the things that she picked were valid you know but i just have specific ideas about what she said you know in general but you know the list was fine one of the things that she said that she would people would live to regret would be that but take advantage of um that cassette bag with the chain but she has that back. She has the one in green. Um, but what she said, which I think is an important note to take, and that's an important note to take when it comes to like any of these videos where they're talking about, well, this is in now, it's not in, and wear this, don't wear that, blah, yada, yada. You know, my philosophy has always been, you really have to essentially know your personal style. If something is your personal style, it really doesn't matter like what's in and what's not. Um, and what she had talked about with regards to like that Bottega bag was that like the vast majority of people who have that bag, you know, they are probably going to live to regret it because it may not be their personal style. And they, they basically just bought the bag because the bag for the most part, you know, is just really, really popular right now. So it's in to like, you know, have all things Bottega at this point. But that particular bag fits her personality. It fits her style. It's a bag that even if it hadn't gotten so like, popular she probably would have bought anyway so that's why she probably won't live to regret that purchase even though the vast majority of people who have that bag probably will because let's just be real that bag has been duped i mean you can get a really good amazon dupe for that bag like there was there was a really good one they just didn't have the color i wanted and i think it was real leather but i actually bought the, the cassette bag um dupe from Amazon too. It was for like maybe, it was like $100, but I think I ended up having like a 20% um, coupon. So I got it for like 80 and I had some points on my Amazon card. So I think I only paid like around maybe $70 for it or something like that. It was in this yellow colorway. I might insert a picture because I did put it on my Instagram, but that was really cute. So, uh, but yeah, people are just duping this bag all over the place. So I think that from a dupes alone, you know, you may, regret it because I do think that that's going to be a bag that's going to just probably date itself a little bit because everybody's doing like certain this version of this particular bag you know they are um even other like luxury houses they're they're still they're starting to do like their versions of like a a leather bag with like a, a thick chain i.e Louis Vuitton with that croissant bag is that how you pronounce it you know what I'm talking about so anyway oh my god this guy he's so loud so annoyed. So annoyed. 
Anyway, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's annoying me <laughs> right now. But then she mentioned the shoulder pad tees. And the shoulder pads, again, I have on the shoulder pad tee right now, so you guys already know how I feel about that. And I have them in every color. Um, you know, the Frankie Shop is the store that had, essentially, they're the ones that we remember, at least. I mean, they might not be the first people to actually had the shoulder pad tee, but that's the one that we know of, you know? And those those particular ones were about $75. I do have the Frankenshot versions. There is a distinct difference between the Frankenshot versions and the dupe versions that you get that are like a lot cheaper. I mean, it's really a case of you get what you pay for. Um, I've even gotten some dupes from like, I got a dupe from Amazon. I got a dupe from, from eBay, I believe, not eBay, from Etsy, I think. But the Etsy one was like only $10 less. And it really was almost comparable to the Frankie Shop one, but it was only $10 less. So it's like, you know what? It is what it is. But she talked about, you know, that may be something that she thought that would essentially maybe date itself over time. Well, A, I don't know that you're gonna regret something in a year or two because this particular trend has really been here for the past couple of years now. And I don't agree with her for a couple of reasons, but the first one would be the fact that this never really got to be super mainstream. I mean, and you can tell it didn't because this year, like Zara, they never like, Zara didn't do a shoulder pad anything this year. Like, honestly, once they sold through all the stuff that they had last season, and last season they had I mean, it was in sweatshirts. They had like, you know, tees that came down to here with shoulder pads. I mean, they, I mean, they had the shoulder pad dresses. I mean, it was in like body suits. I mean, they were shoulder pad out. And this year, you haven't seen that one shoulder pad in any new silhouettes that they've had. So that lets me know that it probably wasn't that successful, which means that it didn't like, I guess, trickle down to the masses um, from that influencer world the way that they anticipated it to be. Because Mango was the same way. Mango had some last year. They didn't have any this year as well. Um, ASOS, the same thing. I mean, you see a couple, but last year it was a lot more prevalent. So I think that that was a trend that essentially kind of stayed with the more fashion forward or more so influencer world because I think a lot of people or a lot of the masses, they really just did not Oh my God. <laughs> so um, the masses, I just think that they just never were really comfortable or confident in wearing it because it was so structured up here. I just don't think that they knew really how to wear it. So it just never really became like a mass thing. Cause I think that this is here to stay. Um, I don't think that it's going anywhere anytime soon. It's just too easy. And even when I like wear it, you know, I feel like it's one of those things that it just makes your, your your entire outfit look super elevated. Like I wore the black version of it. It was just a simple pair of like long jeans um, and some sandals. And so I wore like the black version with like a pair of like just long jeans and some sandals. And I got so many compliments and it was a simple look, but it just looks so chic tucked into like high-waisted jeans. It is like the easiest outfit ever. So I will be wearing that for years. And again, I understand her point. Um, I just think that for me, it's similar to how she feels about the Bottega being like her style. Me, structured pieces have always been like my style, my personal style. So I feel like it doesn't really matter how popular it may or may not get. And I also feel like, you know, a lot of times when we're talking about this, which is really my main point in even like having this conversation with you guys is, are we confusing trending items with things being out of style? Because they are really not the same thing. Just because something is trending um, or it may not necessarily be trending doesn't mean that it may or may not necessarily be in or out of style. Like, you know, everything's not gonna always be trending on your IG, you know, every single day. Like, it doesn't have to flood your IG every day in order to be something that is still very much current and still very much on trend and in style. You know, it doesn't have to be super popular at the moment. And I think that a lot of times we get these things mixed up. So let's just jump to the last thing on her list because that's where it really gets interesting to me. And I was like, okay. And not because of her list in general, because I have no issues with her list, but it was something she said to sort of like support the argument about what she put on the list. So the last thing she put on the list was like, you know those slides from like LV and Gucci? They're like, 
I don't want to say that they're stroker slides, but um, maybe I would say fleece slides, like all over fleece or all over circle, whatever, like those slides. She has those. I'll insert a picture of it because you know exactly what I'm talking about. And all the fashion houses have like some type of version of this, you know, for the most part. Um, even now, like Prada has like a Terry version of it. It's just, you know, it's just really popular to have like these all over like um, non-traditional, more or less, um, I would say like cold weather like sort of materials on these slides. So she went into like the cons about the slide because the slide I think started to wear off in certain parts when she was wearing it, but that's not really the point. So essentially she was talking about this slide and you know the wear and tear that she has on it and she also mentioned that she thought that this was going to be like another, um, basically another Gucci Prince Town meal, the ones with the fur, not just the regular leather versions of it, but the one with the, the fur line one specifically, because she said that she had seen that on a lot of influencers list that they do when it comes down to like, like what's in it, what's out, they had the Gucci ones with the fur as being out. So that wasn't on her list, but she was just saying that she thought that the slides were going to essentially do the same thing, or it was sort of like the same animal, whatever, with regard to like people like not you know being really into them anymore you know after a while and I'm like you know let's go back and revisit that <sighs> I mean where do I even begin here first of all and I don't disagree I think that she I'm pretty sure she's seen on a lot of people's lists I haven't seen it personally, but I know she probably has seen it on people's lists as far as like people saying that that particular shoe is out. Um, so this isn't in reference to like her or her, her pick at all. But I do want to say this. Let's just go back and look at what that meal is because it, A, it's a meal, okay? And our meal is popular right now more than ever like the gucci mule is still a classic shoe it always has been and that's and i want to say that mule started in 2015 if not earlier than that but i want to say it was 2015 when alessandro when he first took over um gucci as creative director so let's just be real gucci single-handedly revitalized the whole mule trend because we were not wearing meals before then i mean were we like, what meals were we wearing before then? We weren't. So in 2015, it was, like, really popular. And then eventually, like, the fur line one came out. And, like, all the fashion editors, I mean, they were wearing it to Fashion Week. I mean, it was, like, that was the shoe. Okay? So let's just circle back. 2015, the meal comes out. 2021. Are we still wearing that meal? Or meals in general, still trending. Everyone has mules. Mules are everywhere. I mean, even look at Crocs. I mean, the <sighs> Bottega, I mean, everybody has a mule. You guys know that I unboxed the Prada mule uh, in my last video. Like, mules are very popular right now. So it's not like the mule is out of date because we're still wearing meals. And I'm talking about traditional meals. I'm not talking about these little fake, talking about open toe meals. I don't know why we're calling those open toe meals. They are not meals. I don't know when we started doing that. Those are sandals, okay? I'm talking about closed toe, open back meals, the traditional meal. Like, are we still wearing those meals? <sighs> we are still wearing those meals. So how is that out of date? Now, let's just take it one step further. Are we wearing Terry Line shoes? Are we wearing Fur Line shoes? Are we wearing Sherpa Line shoes from Mules to to the um, Birkenstock or Birkenstock S type shoes? Um, are we wearing um, Fleece Line shoes? Is that very popular? If you go to people's pre-fall lines on some shoes, like even like J.W. Anderson's shoe, the one with the chain that I actually do have, um, it's like a leather version of it and it's like a gold chain over the forefront of the shoe. Now there's like a fleece line version of that shoe. Uh, if it's not fleece, it's fur. Like everyone's doing these iterations of the shoe. So how in the world, how do you say that the Prince style Gucci mule with fur, the granddaddy of mules because again they're the grandfather like they're the ones that really started this trend modern day of mules being like a really big thing so how do you say that the fur one when fur and all that stuff and all these non-traditional materials are are trending again how is that 
how is that not trending? And also too, a problem with some of these lists too, in general, even though I enjoyed the list, I mean, I think it's fine to kind of like, you know, try to predict what may or may not happen with fashion. It's all in good fun. So it's, it's no shade at all about any of these lists, to be honest with you. I'm just kind of, you know, this is entertainment in general. Even this video is entertainment. But I'm just kind of like trying to figure out, like to even put the Prince Tom meal on any of these lists is very disrespectful. And they only do that because it's Gucci. And, and and that's part of, I will say that that does irritate me just a little bit because Gucci to me, I mean, it's my heart, but I, it's my heart also because I feel like the brand is very accessible to a lot of different people and not just a chosen few. So that's why, you know, I do resonate with that brand, even though I still buy Chanel, I still buy all these other brands, but I like Gucci because of its accessibility. You know, period. But how do you disrespect Gucci? Like, let's just be real. Even if you say, okay, you know, that some of these trends are gonna like go away like really quickly, and they could, and that's fine, they really could, but how long do we expect to really wear the same shoe? Like, do we expect to wear the same thing like four or five and six years in a row? I mean, probably not. So it's like, if you get a good two to three years out of a trend, you've probably gotten a lot more out of a trend than you typically do. Because usually trends come and go within like a season or two. You you may get two years, you, you may get two years. But the Prince Tom Mule was a really, really big thing. And the fur version of it, like I think the shoe came out, well, another shoe came out actually in 2015. In like 2017, 2018, you're still seeing so many articles about it. Like there was a one infamous article that Vogue did. I think that was in 2018 and it was about like how the Gucci, right? And I know that they featured that shoe um, in that particular um, article or whatever. And that was in 2018. And so it's like, the shoe was popular and like really, really trending for like three, four years. Like that's a long run. People really give Gucci a really hard time when they really do make classic items. And they always talk about how Gucci is too trendy. And honestly, they're not really even that trendy. Like even think about the Gucci Ace sneaker. Like that sneaker is a basic court sneaker that they do different iterations on it. Basically just different designs on like the upper of the shoe. But the, you know, the tooling, whatever, the upper, it's all, it's the same, it's the Ace shoe. And we still wear that shoe to this day. And even with all the iterations that they have, it just doesn't date. Now, if you go down to its competitor, Louis Vuitton, What's the shoe? What's that shoe that everybody had a couple years ago? Oh, that monstrosity, the the arch light shoe. Like, who's wearing that shoe now? Like, no one is wearing that. That is like, no one is wearing. It, it was way too bulky. It was going after the whole, you know, um, that shoe trend that was just a little bit too aggressive for everybody. Even the triple S Balenciaga sneaker to me has, has kind of gone by the wayside, but at least they're still releasing, you know, color, new colorways. I don't think Louis Vuitton's making that one. I, I, maybe they are, I don't know, but I haven't seen anybody with that shoe. And it's just like not even in anymore. It's, are we really talking about things not being in style because it's not trending on Instagram like that? Or are we talking about things really just truly being outdated? Because there is a definite difference between the two. Like there are some things that are very dated. Like the grandfather of all like that shoes, that whole overly chunky trend, that is not like, we're not really doing that anymore. We're doing, you know, much sleeker silhouettes, still chunkier soles, but very, a lot sleeker. We're not doing the whole, feel a disruptor type of sneakers anymore. Like that's just not where it's at. That, that trend came and it went and it's done, you know? But there are some things that do still stay, you know? And I'm like, are we just really, really going to essentially ascertain something as being like in fashion or not in fashion based off of how many people are posting it on Instagram? And Gucci always gets caught up in that because they always get items that people get tired of you know, and so once so many people get it and it becomes, because again, it's accessible to a lot of people, then it becomes a passe and, oh, I'm over it. I don't want to buy it anymore. Um, and a good example of that would be the GG Marmont belt. That belt, and you guys know, you guys have seen that belt on a lot 
of lists of things that are out. I don't have the belt, so I don't have a dog in this fight. However, it's a leather belt. It's literally a leather belt with gold or silver hardware, whichever one that you have. How is that belt out? It is a belt. It is not out. A, it's a classic belt, but it's not anything that even goes out of style. So just because people weren't like flashing on Instagram like that means that it's not in style anymore. The same thing with, um, I was in my um, Gucci Facebook group and someone posted a picture of the, I think it was the, I'm gonna say it was the disco bag from Gucci. And the disco bag is a simple like camera bag. And then she said, is this out of style or in style? And I say it was about 50-50, about half the people said it was out of style, and then half the people said, no, it's in style, it's classic. And they're right, it's a classic bag. It is a camera bag. Camera bags do not go out of style. Just because something isn't trending doesn't mean that it's out of style. It's just not trending right now, and that's okay. And I feel like if we need to kind of get out of this mentality of things have to be trending for them to still be relevant, you know? Because there is a such thing as, you know, some things, you know, moving forward. Like, you have to move forward sometimes, you know, like, for example, we've moved forward from, like, the low rise jeans. Like, A, they were never flattering on anybody anyway. <laughs> let's just keep it, a, uh, let's just keep it 100. They were never flattering anyway. So now we're into, like, high or mid-waisted jeans, um, whether it be straight leg or skinny. You know, it is what it is, you know? And just like people are saying that, you know, that skinny jeans are out. They're not out. I mean, yeah, you have other jeans that are in, and they're not necessarily trending right now, but they're not out because it's still a classic silhouette. So I just, you know, I just thought that that's something that we need to kind of discuss as a family. Like, what do you think about that? Because I do think that we sort of get too caught up on what people are wearing. And then the crazy part about that is that the more you wear it, though, then people get so tired of it. So then all of a sudden, you don't want to wear it anymore. But if you're not wearing it and it's not something that you're seeing a bunch of influencers like rocking, then, you know, that means that it's also still going to be out. So it's like, well, which one is it? That's just my thoughts on that particular one. And it actually, it's actually pretty relevant because I do have a Gucci unboxing today. <laughs> and <laughs> if you probably haven't guessed, um, it is something that I did mention today. Um, these are shoes, and it's funny because I said that I was done buying um, luxury shoes this year. And this was my last luxury shoe purchase this year. Um, this wasn't even on my list initially until I found out that I am moving to another state. So actually, not even another state, another city, but I'm moving out of the state of Texas. And what that means is that I'm moving to DC because that's not a state. <laughs> so I am moving guys at the end of next month. So I'm going to a cooler weather um, climate. And so I said, okay, that gave me an excuse to buy this particular shoe because even though I've wanted this shoe since 2015, when I saw fashion editors rocking this shoe, I just knew that me being in Houston, it just wasn't something that I was going to spend this kind of money on, you know, because I knew I would, wouldn't be able to get the wear of it that I would need, but now I have an excuse to. So what happened was, was that one of my friends from work, she knows someone that works at a high-end department store here that sells Gucci shoes, and I was able to get a 30% discount on whatever I wanted, and so I had them check to see if they had this in stock, and they did, so that's it. So, um... You guys know the drill. You also know it comes in the green pretty scroll box, which we all know and love. And full transparency, it's not a true unboxing because I have to try them on to make sure that they fit, and they do fit. And that's in a size 38. Um, and they fit perfectly. Some people said that you're supposed to um, size up a half size because of the nature of the shoe, but I didn't find that to be the case for me. But my feet are fairly narrow, so that's probably the reason why. So, <laughs> the Prince style 
fur line slipper. Actually, this is Sherpa line now. It's not what they're calling fur. I think the original ones were kangaroo fur, and you know people had a heart attack about that. So they changed it, um, and I think this is a newer version that's Sherpa. I don't know if the version that was after the kangaroo fur with Sherpa or not, I have no clue, but I know that this one is. And they're calling this one the 2015 re-edition shoe. So, cause they're bringing out, they're bringing back several different shoes, like the all over fur one, which I love. It's like so extra. It looks like a damn like grizzly bear, but I love that shoe. I'll put a picture um, on the screen for that. But I have wanted this shoe forever. Like I, and y'all have seen this shoe, like I'm pretty sure. Y'all seen people unbox this for years, but of course it has a little hard spit thing here. Um, this is my second pair of Princeton shoes. Um, I have the red leather version, which I unboxed like sometime early last year. Um, I had that in a size 38. And there's a little bit of room back there. I possibly could have gotten away with 37 and a half. However, um, this one fit me perfectly. So I did not have to go up a size because people said that they normally do go up half a size. I guess because of the fur that kind of takes up some space. But like I said, my feet are fairly narrow. So this, this shoe is beautiful as you know. Like these, it's super comfortable as you can imagine, because the red ones are comfortable. And I initially did want a black version of it, but I didn't want to get the basic black ones. I don't know, I just kind of feel like with Gucci, I kind of always want to be a little bit extra, which is why I got the red version to begin with. But I figured if I did get a black version, it would either be this one or it would be the one with like the little embroidered, like I think it's like stars and moon, you know, the little, um, um, the little like, whimsical version of it but yeah so I I I mean guys you guys do not need me to tell you how this shoe is it is great it is wonderful it says made in Italy here again size 38 I went with my normal size but if you have a wider foot um, then you probably would go up um, a half size if you do have this particular shoe and like the regular leather version. I don't know about the other fabric versions of this shoe. I don't have that, so I can't speak to that. But I've wanted this shoe forever and I cannot believe it. So I think that they just um, re-released this particular version of it. Again, a few different iterations of this particular style of shoe that they have right now. Um, this was regular $9.95. I ended up spending, you know, essentially, it was 30% off, so it was like, what, 700, I think, plus tax. So, I just can't wait to wear it. I mean, what can I say about it? Y'all know what this shoe is. You know how it looks. Um, this was like one of my holy grail shoes that I've really wanted. So, I, I'm good. Like, I'm absolutely done. I am done, 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 and done. I am so done. So I think the next video that I'm going to do um, for you guys is gonna probably be a, um, a, I guess maybe more of a meal, like loafer collection, because now I've, I've accumulated enough to be able to do a video on it. Um, and I do have a pair of, um, of shoes from another brand that I bought. I've had those for, at this point, maybe, maybe almost a couple of months, maybe. You guys just haven't seen them because I just didn't know if you guys would want to see that in its own separate video. But I think in conjunction with like showing all of the like the loafers that I do have, I think that'll be actually a really good video for you guys to see. So, and then also too some comparisons. I can tell you guys how some of these things fit, some things to avoid because there are definitely some ones that I have that I'm thinking you guys should not be spending your money on. Um, but yeah, so. Thank you guys. I let me know in in the comment section like what you how do you feel about you know just this whole conversation about trends and what's working and what's not. And that's part of the reason why you'll probably never see me do, you know, like you'll never really see me do like a video about like what not to wear or like what's 
like out. I might tell you like what's in, but I'm not gonna tell you like what's out because I do feel like a lot of that has to do with like what your personal style is. And just because something isn't trending doesn't mean that it's not necessarily like in style. Cause I don't get caught up in the whole like what someone else is wearing. You know, I think that if you do have your own sense of personal style, you don't have to always be, you know, so married to like what you're seeing people wear, you know, up and down your Instagram feed. I think we need to kind of start having a lot more independent thought when it comes to fashion because that's how people are spending all this money and trying to always keep up and thinking that what they have is never good enough because it's not this new this new this or this new that and I just think that you know if we start being more honest about things and more transparent about what fashion truly is then I mean you start working with things that you have um, in your closet already. Not saying that you can't continue to add things because for me, I'm catching up for lost time because I'm just kind of getting into this whole like luxury thing. But I do know that I'm gonna be wearing these forever. I'm not gonna be like, oh, next year if no one's wearing this on Instagram, I'm gonna not wanna wear it anymore. I say it's not in, forget everything about that. I really want to say something else. <laughs> I was gonna say, forget that. Like that's not how we are gonna roll um in my fashion house like that's just not what we're doing so let me know what you guys think about um the, the talk today give me some of your opinions and some of your thoughts let me know if you guys actually saw the cassie video i thought it was a very good video to watch if you haven't seen it i would definitely check it out i love her videos i think she has good content and so just um let me know how you felt about the video so do not forget to like comment and subscribe um and i will see you soon